Okay, so thank you very much for uh, having me. I want to thank uh, Etohum for uh, inviting me to talk, and I'm very excited. I've heard a lot about the startup scene here, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. I'll try to give back as much as I can. I wanted to talk about building an organic growth channel, a referral channel. So basically, it's the holy grail of all startups that don't have any money. Because when you start, you really want to have that user base which brings in quality users, which in turn themselves also bring in quality users. Because about 20% more referrals come from users who were referred by themselves. So I'm going to go. Yes? OK, cool. So I'm going to go step by step and tell you how we built our referral program and hopefully um, be able to provide you some practical tips on, on what to do. So I work at Itoro, oh, which is cool. Itoro is a social investment network. It's like a Facebook for investors. And you can actually buy stocks, commodities, and forex pairs on our platform. We're a broker, uh, stock members and we execute your uh, buy and sells. But what we also do is we expose those buys and sells to other users in the network. So everyone can see what you did. Of course, not just the percentage, just, sorry, just the percentages, not the total amount to preserve your privacy. But when a user enters our platform, they can search and find if there is uh, someone who's doing well with their investment strategy and then you can actually copy that person. So basically, if you don't know uh, about investing and you want to have someone sort of guide you, you can actually find that person, find that profile, the risk profile that's good for you, and the gain profile that's good for you, and then copy that person. And of course, the persons, the, the people who are uh, copied are getting paid by us. They're called popular investors. So I had the growth team, and we do a lot of things. And I'm going to talk mainly about the Refer a Friend, which is our paid referral channel. But I want to spend a little bit to talk about the other stuff and sort of create a context for what we do. So we do platform integration with Facebook and Google and uh, Twitter, but mostly the first two. And this is very, very important, because these networks give you a whole bunch of tools you, you, that you can use for free. You can integrate Facebook's login and Google's login, and you can have easy and quick access to their data through those login buttons. And if you use that, you will create value for your users, both by having the login process and the sign-in process really quick and easy, and also by targeting them later on and offering them stuff that are really for their segment. What we also do is SEO, which we've talked about a lot, so I won't get into it. We have some cross-company uh, responsibilities, and this is something we are uh, th about 250 people, so it's not like a 20-person startup that everyone has the same mindset. So one of the jobs I had when I just entered the company was to create um, a, a mindset of experimentation and data-driven analysis. Because users, uh, users, sorry, employees of the company, everyone's a user to me. So employees of the company, what they would do is they would send out like emails to 1.5 million users and tell them to do something or offer them something, but they would really have no feedback on how that performed. So they would come to me and they would ask, is it a good email? Should I send it again? What should I do with it? And that was the leverage that I used to tell them, look, next time, don't send it to 1.5 million users. Send it to 100,000 users and send a different email as a control to a different 100,000 users and have full tracking and monitoring. And then what you would see is the results of your email. And you can put a number to it on conversion to money and conversion to clicks. Uh, so of course, we do conversion management and we do tracking. The way I look at it is that tracking is the basic. If you can't have tracking on your users, there is no way that you will be able to know what they do on your platform. And if you won't be able to know what they do on your platform, then basically you won't be able to see the bottlenecks 
in your funnels and in your processes that causes users to drop out. And if you won't be able to see those, you will actually be losing all the customers that you've acquired and they will drop out your platform and you wouldn't be able to monetize on that. So it's like three levels. The basic level is tracking, getting to know what your users are doing. Above that, that's conversion monitoring, which is basically finding those bottlenecks. And above that is growth hacking, which is creative thinking on how to open those bottlenecks and let the users flow through the funnel. And we have several ownerships. Um, I won't get into that. Just one, if you, I don't think you've heard, uh, I've heard today about Mixpanel, but Mixpanel uh, slash Kissmetrics, which is another good platform, is an excellent way to track your users. Mixpanel is especially good on mobile, which I heard is an opening space here, an upcoming space in Turkey. So good luck. Optimizely, of course, has been discussed, etc. So let's talk about our For a Friend channel. Basically, the program says, if you bring in your friend and that friend deposits $100, we will give you $100 and your friend $50. So notice that a lot of the, of the stuff that Matan talked about at the beginning are already implemented on our platform. You have to give both the inviter and the invitee. So for us, it's not really dollars. What we give them is called eToro credits, which is the ability to uh, trade with the money, but you can't take it out. So for us, it costs like $2. So that brings the LTV to CPA ratio to about organic. If you don't know what LTV to CPA ratio is, um, now's the time to ask. Awesome. Okay, so what I wanted to, sh what I wanted to show you is uh, how we started. So I was, um, I aim to bring in as much numbers as I can. So I brought in a lot of financial data. And it's gone, and it's back, that's great. And um, I had this back and forth with legal, so basically I'll show you as much numbers as I can. And also I have to show you a little bit of old data, but it'll do the trick. So this is our Q2. And you can see that both in registrations and in first-time deposits, as well as the first-time deposit amount, which is the purple one here, we have very nice growth. So I wanted to share with you what it is uh, we did to get that growth into action. And just a quick word, our funnel is actually a two-step funnel. So first of all, we get users to register, and then we get users to deposit money. So the first step is creating registered users, and then the second step is turning them into FTDs, first-time depositors. So the first thing uh, we did is we divided the funnel into three parts. There are actually three funnels when you think about it. The first one is allowing the users to invite as many friends as possible. And that's, that's an integral part, and it's a really tricky one, and we'll go into depth in that. The second funnel is the middle funnel, which is actually the invitation. You want to make the invitation as uh, appealing as possible, so as many users will see it and come to your platform. And of course, the lower funnel is what the users see when they come in. Also, Matan spoke about creating different landing pages for different users, so we have a referral page, landing page, and I'll talk about that as well. So this is how I got the old program. The old program was uh, log in below and invite all your friends, and when they join eToro, they get their $20 gift card. And that's not all. In addition to this fancy, no one ever read the whole thing. Users did not know what to do. This is an ugly, ugly page. And it's horribly built because there's no feedback mechanism. Users didn't know what to do. They didn't know if the invitation went out or not. It just said success every time. There was no tracking. There was no feedback to the user. And basically, it was like uh, a missile. You fire and forget, and usually you forget. So what we did is we did a lot of tweaks, and we basically had to rebuild the funnel from uh, the ground up. So first of all, we made it fully responsive. All of the users now look at their emails and surf over the uh, phone. 
So most of the people also that have websites, if it's not fully responsive, make it fully responsive. It's the easiest way to have mobile penetration. And the second one, because we have different systems, we have to have just one login. Now, I'm not sure how it's applicable to each and every one of your startups, but if you have different domains because of security or other reasons, make sure the user has a frictionless experience across the way. We've also integrated into our mobile apps. We've personalized the UX. This is a point I'm gonna talk about uh, a lot later. We did revamping of the Google contacts, which is the bulk uploading of all your friends' emails, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, nothing is really good if it doesn't run well and smooth. So we wrote, rewrote the whole back end as well, and we integrate a lot of security measures because once you deal with money, there's a lot of fraud, okay? Especially if you give coupons and you have like referral mechanisms, you can make sure that users will take advantage of that. And I'm not talking about like the simple, I will invite myself. I'm talking about creating trees in which a f uh, fictional users invite others across the globe. And you gotta have something to protect yourself from that. And et cetera, et cetera. So this is what we ended up with, which is a more modern looking uh, three-step funnel for the invitation. So again, context, this is the upper funnel. This is the funnel that allows users to invite their friends. So users can log in. And we introduced another uh, interesting thing, which is adding another bonus. So I thought a logic behind all that was if we give $100 for every $100 that they deposit, why not add something nice just to draw users to register? So we have this incentive to make users deposit money once they re they've registered, but why not give them another $20, again, which is like 50 cents for us, in order to get them to register. And the way we did it is we implemented it using uh, an altruistic approach. There are two types of uh, uh, referral programs or two approaches. One is the altruistic approach, which is invite your friend and give to your friend. And the second approach is invite your friend and you get some money. So we wanted to see if that works and totally made sense. So what we did is, first of all, we took that new uh, funnel and we A-B tested it against the old boring one. Now, usually you would say there's no need to do that because the old one was ugly, insecure, and didn't convert. But every change that you make, make sure you do it with an A-B testing because you can never know what your users get attached to and maybe some users, especially if you're a global firm like we are, they really like text. So German people, for example, they really like to be informed on what they do, even if it's not about them. For example, now we're rolling out in Germany a different policy, which will only affect the new users. We are also letting all the current users, the current German users know about that because that's just a part of their culture. So always A-B test, you'll be very, very surprised on what works and what not. And of course, uh, we found out that the new RAF is better and we killed the old RAF. So then we got this. And what we wanted to do is once we introduced the additional bonus, we wanted to, of course, A-B test that as well to see if it works better. And what we did in order to do that is, of course, create an A-B testing environment. And that A-B testing environment was a little bit tricky and I'm sure you're gonna get into that yourselves because you have three funnels and when you think about it, the funnels are detached. So if I'm going to invite someone, that's one funnel and that funnel basically ends with the invitation. And then the second funnel, which the user comes in, is not a, a continuous uh, form with the previous one. It's not like a screen after screen after screen. It's a different person. It happens usually after some sort of time delay. So being able to track users across that funnel proved to be very challenging. And we used different uh, methods to do that. One is Dynamic Yield. If you don't know this company, it's a very, very cool company. It allows you both to track your users and to uh, present each user with a different content. So basically you personalize your content per user and they do the segmentation, they're really cool. Um, we use some database tricks, mixed panel, 
and we set off and tried it. And what happened is nothing. Basically, we found out that we offer $20 more for users to register, and they don't like it. And that was a big uh, surprise for us because you get more money. Why not you know, register more? But no, they didn't do that. So that was nice to know at the beginning, and it saved us some budget and allowed us to focus on the, referral on the referral funnel as it is. So we modified the funnel, it's now a two-step instead of a three-step way. And this might have been one of the clues because you wanna make your funnels as short as possible. So you will allow a frictionless experience as much as possible. So now we have on the desktop side, we have this design and on the mobile we have this design. So, okay, we found out that our offering works best this way, and we've created this site. So now we went on and wanted to see how can we make it better, okay? So what we did is we did a whole bunch of experiments. We took each part of the funnel and we tested it. And then we developed another feature and we tested that feature and we saw if there's an uplift. And an uplift is about 10, 50% in our scale is good. You don't have to have like 200, 400. But like Aaron said before, if you're a small company, don't bother yourself with these numbers. Look for something that has a real impact. So what we did is we wrote the Gmail importer and we pushed our numbers up to almost 100%. So meaning almost 100% of the users who click and try to import their Gmail uh, account emails proceed and, and are able to do that and we added Hotmail. So once you send out emails, you know which are your major suppliers, your ISPs, and you wanna take the Pareto rule and just take the 80% of the uh, ISPs and be able to allow bulk emails sent through them. And we found that Hotmail, surprisingly, since it's a really old and I would say not that popular platform, but apparently it's extremely popular among our users, so we added Hotmail importer support. We went over all the text that we had, and we used Optimizely, which was uh, mentioned before, to change that. And I'll talk a little bit later about uh, language experiments, but this is an amazing thing to do because there's really no cost, not even in overhead and users, user uh, uh, aggravation, or employee time, it's so easy and it makes a whole lot of difference. And we changed all the text. You can see that the text has already changed. We're using now get $1,000 for each 10 friends that you uh, bring in, which is a little bit weird because you would expect to have like for each friend you get 100 bucks. Oh, actually this version is with the old one. So our new version now is actually this one get up to $1,000 by inviting just 10 friends to eToro. Which works better? I have no idea why. Maybe 1,000 is a magic number. But to tell you the truth, I really don't care. I mean, if it brings in the numbers, I don't need to know why. Okay, I can guess why, but I don't really need to know. Also, we added a nice animation, this cool guy, and the numbers change. And this is cool because it gives the user immediate feedback. The more friends you invite, the number that's $200 there sort of and changes to the new one, which is cool. It's like a game. It gamifies this process, and it also lets the user know what's the maximum amount of, uh, of uh, compensation he can have. And users tend to invite more and more and more because of that. We added share buttons. So like I said before, integration with Facebook and uh, Twitter and Google Plus is really, really important. Out of those three, Facebook works the best for us. So we allow users to take uh, both. As you can see here, there are, oh, it's up there. They have a specific link. They can copy paste that. We also gave them a button they can press and boom, it happens automatically. And this is really cool because you can see, uh, in a minute you can see the numbers it works like a charm, and not only does it work like a charm immediately, but it's like you create anchors within the social media, and every time you have a PR effect, then these anchors sort of 
bring in for, from you, for you, sorry. So we had uh, our CEO go on interview on the BBC that created a lot of noise in the UK. And what we saw are these anchors, these shares that our users shared by themselves, bringing in a lot more traffic than our usual email and, and whatnot. So it's good to have those anchors out there in the social media world. Another cool thing is WhatsApp shares. Once you have that on your uh, mobile phone, it's really easy to do. You don't have to do any integration. It's basically just a link. And you use that link. It works on iPhone and uh, also on Android. And that's it. And the numbers are staggering. I can't share them. But it works in an amazing fashion. Users use the WhatsApp share a little bit even more than they use the Facebook share. So it's really, really cool. And also we introduced Fat Fingers Design, which is basically the, the tails, the big one. And that's nice because, first of all, it's better for the users. And also it's good for you because you don't get accidental clicks, which mess up your data afterwards. Click. So this is the, middle, the upper funnel. And we're going to talk a little bit about the middle funnel. The middle funnel are the invitations themselves. So when we first got this, uh, this channel, there were only emails. But then, even if you look at the emails themselves, you can do a whole lot of optimization. So what we did is we were wondering, first of all, we wanted to add more emails. So you really want to surround the user with a nice, fuzzy feeling that he's been taken care of, and we remember them, and of course, not you know, step on their toes too much, but really be in their mind, okay? So what we did is we added a reminder to deposit. So we took all our registered users and created an automated process that sends them a uh, reminder. So hi, I hope you enjoyed our platform. If you have enjoyed it, maybe you can start using it by depositing so-and-so money and also getting your nice bonus. And then when do you send that? Do you send that? a day after, a week after. An email usually uh, has a lifespan of about 48 hours. So within 24 hours is the peak of open, and it dies down after 48 hours. So probably you would say about three days later, right? But no, we found that just by creating a nice histogram of how, many, how fast users uh, tend to deposit that if a user hasn't deposited within the four, first four or five hours, then uh, they're lost. Again, Pareto rule. So what we did is we introduced that email six, seven hours on the same day afterwards. And we got much, much better results. We got almost a 50% uplift in responding to that. Also, a nice thing we saw about emails is that if you show the user, again, the immediate value of what he can do, then they will tend more to do that. So to do that, we introduced a nice algorithm that what it does, it looks at the inviter's profile and looks for a nice gain that they had. So if you had like a 47% gain trading gold or you did 100% on the euro dollar, then we would embed that within the email itself and that would create a lot of buzz because think about it from the user's side. You're getting now an email from a friend of yours and that friend of yours says, look at this nice platform I'm using. Maybe you should use it as well. But basically, it's I think a little bit weaker than having the user say, look at this nice platform I found. I've already made money there. If you want to also make money, come in. Now, of course, we can't say make money because we're heavily regulated by both the London Stock Exchange and Cyprus Stock Exchange. But we can show value, and this is what we did. And it worked like a charm, and it worked like a charm downstream of the funnel. So you remember we have two funnels. First one gets the user to register. Second one gets the user to deposit. So it's really easy to affect clicks. And it's really, well, it's not that easy, but it's just a little bit more difficult to affect registrations. But to have something happen here and have a two times, a 2x effect on the deposits, that's, that was a really good day for us. And it did that. And I think there's a lesson there. And that lesson is always show your users the value that they can obtain from using your product. 
And also, I want to share some numbers. So within a few weeks of allowing users to post, we had about 35K posts on LinkedIn and about 1.5K on Twitter, uh, sorry, on Facebook and about 1.5K on Twitter and LinkedIn. And we got 240 FTDs out of that. So that's out of thin air, right? Because we didn't do anything. We didn't even have to put in like someone who clicks. Just the users do it, and it's really, really powerful. Also, um, I think the gist of this uh, slide basically says, don't be shy to approach your users again and again. So there is a fine line between reminding your users and spamming your users. But most people think that this line is crossed a whole lot uh, further than it really is crossed. So you can look at it this way. Some of your potential users don't want your product and they don't want to look at it and they won't read the email and so they won't read the second email as well. And then you got the other part, which are users who are hooked on the first email. But then you have the gray area. And the gray area are just users waiting to get a little bit pushed into the product. So we introduced that, and we found out two things. First of all, do it rapidly. Have it in high frequency. Users tend to forget. If you wait for a month or two months to re remind them in order to not spam them, then it's out of context and it's out of mind, and you'll get poor results. And the second thing is, even if you do that, once in a while what you can do is like a, a big campaign and you can address all the users that haven't registered yet, even old users or churned users. And you, we saw really nice uh, results. The green one is January. So basically, we did this in uh, June, and you see that 18% 18, 18 of our registered users registered even though half a year they haven't heard about us. You never know what PR they encountered or what their friends might have told them. Don't be shy to uh, approach them again. So this is the invitation part. And the lower funnel are the set of screens that the inviter sees or the onboarding process. Now that's a whole art by itself. So I will just touch uh, a few things. First of all, personalization works. If you have something, you know something about the user, use it. So um, Matan talked about using the Gmail or the email of the users, embedding it in the registration form. But if you have the name and details of the inviter, then you can use that. Because it's really nice to know that me invited you, and I see his name. So I know I'm at the right place, and I feel like this page was built for me. So we added that. We added the inviter name. We added uh, something that indicates a funnel, so each funnel now gets a different landing page. So if they came in from Facebook, they see one thing, and if they came in from Twitter, they see another thing. And also we have post-registration personalization, which is basically some text coming up and saying, hey, Nia, welcome to Etoro. Come watch your friend, uh, inviter name, uh, in action and see what it did last week which is nice because people get engaged and they feel like you've built this just for them. And you really want to create a personal journey for each user because each user is unique and he wants to feel that way. And if you are able to automatically give him that feeling, then it will get more emotionally engaged with your product. And uh, that's good for everyone. And a little bit about language experiments. So what we did is we took our onboarding process and I asked one of uh, the people on my team, I said, okay, let's, let's have like a weekly brainstorming session in which every month or two months we change a specific portion of the onboarding and we try to run a lot of experiments on it. And over time you can see, um, well, now you can see, we've uplifted the registrations 700% uh, and we also uplifted click 700% and basically it's just it's just free money it's really just free money and you would not believe the difference that uh, join now has with register now 
start now, start here. And there's really, I think, no logic that can apply to that. I, I haven't heard. There's one thing, you always have to use the word you everywhere. So collect your bonus, register yourself, find out how to work in the word you into everything you write. But besides that, it's purely experimentation, brainstorming, iteration, fast, fast, fast iterations until you hit the jackpot. Um, cool. And of course, I mentioned that uh, there's a lot of abuse. So when we saw this growth, we automatically thought it's abuse. It's not abuse. OK, so we built this thing, and it is nice. And then we sort of reached uh, a product that we felt is uh, growing nicely and is fairly optimized. And like also said before, if you really think that you build a cool product and that product will sell itself, then you are mistaken. So if you build it, they will not come unless you call them to come. So what we did is we did a kickoff uh, campaign in order to start monetizing on the raft potential. So what we did is we created um, a cross-channel campaign. We used email marketing and we touched users in their Facebook feed both by paid and also by notifications. If you want me to elaborate on Facebook notifications later, just ask me on the Q&A. It's a really powerful tool. And we also colored our site with a lot of touch points that enabled users to invite their friends. And we added uh, $50 or whatever to the offering just to celebrate. Again, for us, it's like $2 more. And we did it in a two-week campaign, which is a very nice, very limit, time-limited campaign. And we decided to create two waves. Again, first wave is introducing the, camp, uh, the, the channel, introducing the campaign offering. And the second wave is like a last chance slash reminder to uh, messaging. And this works really well, because on the first week, you really have so much potential that you can uh, realize. And then there's fatigue, and users tend to sort of ignore your messaging. So what we did is we changed our messaging for the second week, and we only addressed the users that we saw potential in. So we got really nice results. And one of the things that we used is a new targeting system. So again, like I said before, at the beginning, what users, what employees of our company used to do is they used to send out mass emails to millions and millions of users, and we have almost four million now. So it's really easy to click on the database and boom, spam everyone. <clears throat> but then you'd get really low, like 0.1 opening rate and, and no clicks whatsoever. And it's really a waste because there are ISPs who rank you according to your spamability, and then you get blocked for future users on that ISP. By the way, if you're not using email, then you're really doing a disservice to yourself because email is extremely strong. It's an art form that can be learned really, really fast, and it has like a limited amount of knowledge that you have to acquire and then just run with it. And people still both read their emails and also give higher value to someone, to something that's been given to them by email. Providing, of course, that you write the email correctly and it doesn't look like a promotion. So what we did is we worked on the email side. We did a lot of optimizations there. But on the other hand, we also worked on the audience side. And we wanted to send our emails only to users who are more likely to open it. Okay, so bear in mind that this is a retention tool that we are using to acquire new users because we are addressing current users and we're asking them to bring in new ones. So we have a lot of data on our users and we wanted to see how we can use that. So we analyzed different segmentations of our users and we targeted only the users that we thought would, uh, would respond well to the email. And we also created uh, a messaging uh, that would be suitable for that one. So for example, if a user has created some sort of gain for, his, for himself lately, then we wanted to tell him that he can share his success with other users. But if it's a user that was in the group that were invited before, then we wanted to say, okay, you were invited you're in our system for a while. 
have other, have other users enjoy the same experience that you had. And this worked really well. And this is basically how you get nice results and nice rapid growth. Because like um, everyone who's done it can tell you, it's not magic. It's really hard work and a really a lot of focusing to do. So it's really easy once you start the process to stray along different lines because there's always someone who will come to you with a new fresh idea and tell you that this is the blockbuster, this is the silver bullet that you'll need in order to create your exponential growth and you just need to change this little feature here and there. But most growth that I know about has been accumulated percentage after percentage over time doing fast iterations and constant experimentations and focusing on the goal. Uh, this is it. Cool.